rambling on and for Glenn to discover when doing the edit. So, hi, Glenn. <laughs> I heard some noise. Maybe it's back. Maybe it's not. Maybe it is his wife. Who knows? Well, all right. KJ was the first one back. So I thought it was Glenn, but of course, being older, he will spend, well, statistically more time for every bathroom breaks and also more frequent bathroom breaks, I'm guessing. But hey, let's... That's just me. Don't uh, take that for facts. <laughs> You're not a medical profession either. <laughs> no, no, not, not a historian, at all. not a doctor. <laughs> what are you? <laughs> I basically know very little about very much. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like me. <laughs> <laughs> But if you if you combine that with the mindset of how hard can it be and no restraints <laughs> whatsoever in trying new stuff, then uh, well, it can lead to some fun situations. Yeah, I guess that's the maker mentality. Yeah, <laughs> that might sum it up very good. Ooh, I got a new subscriber during the episode. That's nice. Good for you. Oh, yes. So now I'm back where I was 10 days ago. So. <laughs> <laughs> I think I only lost lost one last week or something like that. Yeah. We'll have to check with Glenn, our, our... social media manager. <laughs> What's that? Subscribers, you've lost one, KJ. <clears throat> yeah. You're down to 322. And Havard has <laughs> remained the same. And I have gained three. <laughs> Do you have a scoreboard or something like that keeping track? Uh, <laughs> I thought about that the other day, actually. <laughs> <laughs> but I know there is uh, there are a lot of web pages where you can follow statistics on your own or others' YouTube pages, but do some of them have the possibility to add several accounts so you can actually see them and compare them towards each other? That would be interesting. I'm not sure. There's that um, social blade. Where and you then, of course, it would be nice if, if it's people, well, everybody who is subscribed have an account, but not everyone has a public account. But it would be nice to see also which subscribers also subscribe to the other accounts. So if oh, you did, that would be cool. Our three, we would see how many we have in common. Yeah. yeah. See the network branch out. Yeah. yeah. So to say. Hmm. Yeah. All right, yeah. Glenn, technical question. What is this called in uh, Old English? Oh, uh, it's the it's the inner out of a musical box, isn't it? Um, yeah. I don't know. Are you struggling to find an English name for it? I haven't Googled it, but I thought, well, I could go straight to the source and just ask you. Uh, I didn't I would invent have it. Music box. Music box. Yeah, but you have Innards. several types of music box, but this is the swiveling uh, hand crank uh, thingamajig. I think that's probably a really good name for it. I'll probably just yeah, stick that's, with that. That's, that's my next uh, title, hand crank yeah. thingamajig. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You should. I think you should go more clickbaity on your titles. Your videos deserve more views, Havard. Yeah, they do. <laughs> Should really go on full with the clickbait and yeah. sexual innuendos and <laughs> giving away money to people. And well, I don't have any money to give away. That's but I, mean, I, can, I can make. I can probably buy a lot of Monopoly money and then <laughs> fix it if in you, post. <laughs> if you if you pay me, I'll subscribe to your channel. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's discuss numbers. <laughs> Next week, uh, Glenn has a, a phone bot network on that wall behind him with just 100 <laughs> yeah. subscribe and like. Maybe, maybe on the wall behind me, I could do um, some sort of score sheet for our subscribers on there. I think that would be pretty cool, actually. Yeah, I've actually Yay. been, not realistically, but I have thought the thought, of course, you have the possibility of paying some bot to give you a thousand subscribers to get you over the threshold but of mm. course they also require you to have the watch hours so a lot of people buy in and they realize that they don't generate enough watch hours so they don't 
past the threshold anyway, but I'm over the threshold, so I don't need to buy a thousand subscriber for that. But it is very cheap, so I can easily just pay it just to bump my numbers up from three eight to four eight, <laughs> because it would just looks good. And I, I know people are paying, what is it, twenty euros a month now to get that blue check mark on Instagram, and then of course I can pay uh, twenty thirty dollars one time just to boost the subscribers account to the thousand. <laughs> Do you think how much, how much does it cost you for a thousand subscribers? I don't remember, but I don't think it was much. I think it was thirty, thirty, forty dollars or something like that. It Bloody was hell. not much. That seems really cheap. Another way to boost your your subscribers is to tell people at your workplace what you do. Yeah, that's cheaper. Yeah, that's true. But then I have to talk to people. Ah, oh, we're back well, to that so. again. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I tell you what, Havard, I didn't think it would take long to figure out where you work and to get some sort of number or contact <laughs> detail. <laughs> I mean, uh, as, as marketing manager, hang on. <laughs> as uh, head of marketing, actually, I um, maybe I'll just sort that out for you. But that might be a, a competition. Like uh, we can run that on an episode. Where does Hovar work? <laughs> and then people can just pick up on the hints, and the, they have to. Of course, that will give us more uh, more views because they have to go through the old episodes. To where did he mention work? And oh, he works with that. Okay, and then they have to start cross referencing it. Then I think I think you're forgetting that one of our listeners actually knows where you work. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> you know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> Don't anybody ask homemade Marco. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> and that is the only clue I'm giving you. <laughs> so you did a, a post the other day, and it, you know when you notice something, this is you, Havard, by the way, when you notice something that just feels really familiar and made me feel a little bit warm and fuzzy for no, just for stupid reasons, really. You bought some bacon and you posted a picture of the local shop where you got it from. Yeah. What was the shop called? Uh, Coop. Coop. It's called the, it's called the co-op in this country. I was just, Oh yeah. I was just really happy that uh, you have co-ops. Yeah. The cooperative. Yeah. Yeah. That's why what it means, yeah. Whenever we, <laughs> whenever we go on holiday and we see a cop, because we've got one just down the road, um, my daughter will say, "Oh, there's a co-op here! Yay!" <laughs> yeah, we have the same we go with, there every uh, day. <laughs> I think it was when we went to Scotland. We saw uh, Spar. Yeah, it's also a chain that we have here in Norway. So, like, ooh, that's like home. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I wonder. I think that's where we got the the Yorkshire tea, actually, from the spa. Yeah, and that we bought a two hundred and fifty pack, and we just recently finished it off. But luckily, uh, my brother in law's uh, girlfriend went uh, to visit her daughter, which is living in the UK, and we got her to bring back another pack. So now we're lasting for the next half year, <laughs> and that will. <laughs> That will most likely last until Maker Central. Wow. So then I can buy a new pack. But then I'm buying the Giga pack. I'm I'm paying for extra luggage on the airplane. (laughs) (laughs) We can always figure out how much it is for me to send you some over if you need some. I think the the shipping cost will cost more than the tea itself. Right. But that being said, there is a few stores here in Oslo that actually sells it at the higher cost, of course. But I think it'd still be cheaper to buy it there than to have you send it. Right. Fair enough. I'll not bother that. That being said, we had, uh, after the last episode, we had uh, a listener actually uh, reaching out saying that, uh, all right, if there is going to be like a make or meet up, uh, like uh, behind the mistakes style he was uh, very interested in joining, and he also just recently got uh, the tickets for Maker Central. So he was asking oh, okay. if uh, I was going there, and then we should probably meet him there. So we have listeners that are actually going to the Maker Central. That's nice. Well, they're, not, 
they're not they're not listening that much if they're asking if you're going because you announced you were going. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> or maybe it was just more of a confirmation. Are you really going, or are you just chickening out because it is involving people? So there, there's, <laughs> there's the chance of me. Oh no, I lost my ticket. <laughs> and are you outing this listener, or is it a? Uh, have you got some sort of doctor-patient confidentiality agreement going on? <laughs> yeah, I don't like to out people. Um, but. Uh... What's his handle again? <laughs> it's uh, his call. Uh, his name is uh, Stian, and I think his handle is actually Stian something. But Stian yeah, Soros. Soros. Yeah, Stian. that's the one. Do you think? No offense, Stian Soros, but you sound like a dinosaur <laughs> to me. <laughs> Stian Soros. <laughs> <laughs> I never thought you about... No, if that, if that was my name, I name. was changing my handle tonight. Yeah. <laughs> I, I read it the other day and I thought that sounds like a dinosaur. <laughs> in, in the bay, a really cool dinosaur. Yeah, oh, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, you'd have, you'd have been the top of the bill in Jurassic Park, mate. <laughs> a makosaurus. Yeah, there's a... Uh... Yeah, there's a di- lot of dinosaur-related uh, names out there. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we ha- hung out a bit uh, at uh, Skaperfestivalen. So. <clears throat> He's a really nice bloke. So I-, I hope he takes it the right way. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, I'm really sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so you've not given me a chance or given me any segues to talk about all of my grown-up DIY projects. Do you have grown up DIY products? I thought it's easy for you to say. All right. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> so you have some adult make it yourself projects you said <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> casting that's... some rubber perhaps or <laughs> oh, you two are just always in the gutter I mean I, my mind never goes this way I can't believe you two, two sometimes it's just <clears throat> crazy Is it, are you all, all Scandinavians the same way I mean, it's it's dark eight months of the year, so we're just cramped up inside. So, no, yeah. fair enough, fair enough. I understand. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, the DIY projects. I got a um, our podcast has been a nice little reminder of timings and things for me. So on episode three, I announced I was going to start the grown-up projects at home, starting with the utility room. Two weeks later, for episode five, I finished that project. Then I had two weeks off and did a YouTube video. And then on episode eight, I started the bathroom. Finished that by episode 12. And I have now finished the office it's all done. Now you're just making us look bad. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was uh, not so much humble brag, but I mean, it's really impressive uh, your uh, the the speed you're marching on. I could never <laughs> keep up with that, I think. It wasn't so much as a brag. I just wanted to share my sense of relief to let you know it's all fucking over at last. <laughs> I, am, I am knackered. <laughs> it sounds like it. <laughs> so did it, did everything turn out the way you envisioned it? Yeah, yeah, it did. Yeah, just a bits with everything. Um, and I knew doing the office with the last was the right way to go because I would never have started the other two projects if I'd not done it this way around. But I absolutely love this space. So nice to have a comfy chair, a heated blanket, 
a desk with my computer on, which is in the same place all the time. I don't have to put it away. I don't have to move it to another room. The Wi-Fi yeah, seems to really work nice. here. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's all good. Yeah, very happy. What else are you going to use the, that space for? Is it just going to be the the computer work uh, place? Yeah, just, or... just, just podcast and editing and... That's probably it, really. And my uh, tax return once a year, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't have any uh, clean making, so to say, that's going to follow me in there? I, unfortunately, I've not got enough room in here for that. Um, I did want to move the laser in, but um, I share the space with the treadmill and three bikes. So, uh, yeah, not quite enough space for that, unfortunately. Yeah. So I just have to stick with the workshop for making, but... That doesn't make me sad at all. I quite like that space as well. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Nice. It's all good. Yeah, it's it's really good to, to actually get to finish things. I think I feel. Yeah. Crossing them off yeah. uh, the list completely, not just partially. So, yeah. 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 Good for you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> A good oh, Christmas I'm... gift to yourself. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I can't. I've been uh, I've been banned from spending any money. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a correlation there? <laughs> yeah, I have. Uh, you know, obviously doing three new rooms in the house has um, eaten away at funds a little. And two yeah. weeks before Christmas, I bought the um, lights for filming, and they weren't very expensive. But I bought them the other day. And uh, got a proper bollocking off my wife in front of my daughter, who thought it was absolutely hilarious. <laughs> at the end of it, she said, "My daughter looked at me and said, uh, Dad, you just got told off.'" <laughs> said, "I know, right?" <laughs> do you have a joint yeah. account, or do you have your own spending? Yeah, we have, no, we have a joint account. We we pretty much get whatever we want. To be fair. The money's not tight. It was just um, we just spent a load, and yeah, you know we've, we've not bought. We've only bought one Christmas present so far. So, <laughs> <laughs> changing the subject, um, well, a little bit, but keep our wives in it, mine and yours anyway, KJ. So we made it onto <laughs> your wife's top five Spotify list. We made a top five Spotify. Yeah, yeah, yay! That's uh. <laughs> That's a milestone. Yeah. Did you see my wife's response? No. No. We didn't even make sure it on her did. list. <laughs> we didn't make we didn't make it on her list. It was just the uh, three northern makers that made it on her list. <laughs> uh, uh, should you be concerned, Glenn? Does your wife have a thing for Swedes? It's uh, I might see start to see a pattern here. <laughs> well, I don't know. I mean, I introduced her to the three northern makers and. You know, I talk to a Swedish fella every week and message him almost every day. So maybe it's me that's got a thing for Swedes. Uh, you're selling it in at least. Uh, she's just following your lead. Yeah, yeah. It's like I say, we're on board together with most things, so it's all good. <laughs> I think the only reason that we're on my my wife's uh, top five podcast list is uh, that uh, she looks at uh, she a lot of her podcasts are are YouTube's only. Uh, so uh, she, ah, doesn't, right. she doesn't listen to that much audio only podcast, I think. <laughs> but still, uh, every win is a win. Yeah, I'll take it. I like I'm quite happy with that 121 on the Norwegian comedy <laughs> thing. It's just a ranking, I'm there. Gives you something to wait for, doesn't it? <laughs> as long as you get a number, you're happy. <laughs> <laughs> so I posted on. I don't think we spoke about it on the podcast, did we, today? I posted on Instagram my... Um, she made me a desk plaque this morning to, as well. Yeah. So it's a, a three-sided desk plaque. One side says head of marketing. The other side says YouTuber, not professional, in brackets. And then the other side is overlord, <laughs> depending <laughs> which, which head I'm wearing that night. <laughs> <laughs> That's really I nice. Think, a really yeah. supportive spouse. Yeah. Well, I'm, I've been uh, conferring with your wife on Instagram as well. I think she's going to make you a badge. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I afraid to think she... that what it would say. 
<laughs> I suggested she knitted you a CEO badge. <laughs> Yeah, nothing more un CEO like than a knitted <laughs> badge of the. <laughs> yeah, might be a trendsetter in that. Who knows? Who knows? We've still not got a title for Havard. No, oh, that's true. I actually, it slipped my mind as well. I haven't given it much thought, but Jester. I don't get. Is that the Adams family uh, reference? No, that's Fester. I, <laughs> I said <Yeah>. no. <laughs> Jester, the med- medieval entertainer. No. Dude, no. Okay. Anar in Swedish. Yeah. <clears throat> but yeah, he's not that funny. No, <laughs> no, he's not. No, no. He's but, not bad uh, though at being funny. That is. <laughs> On, on the topic of titles... Is it voluntary or involuntary? <laughs> <laughs> on the topic of titles, uh, I listened to the Safety Third podcast the other week, um, and they uh, they interviewed a guy who... Uh, his title was Henchman to a, <laughs> to a billionaire. <laughs> now, a, a millionaire, I think. I thought of uh, Howard... Uh, uh, <laughs> the same thing. Because uh, he actually works for... Uh, some some guy doing a, did a tech startup that went really well and he sold it and got a lot of money and thought, oh, what do I want, want to do? I want to start my own robot fighting league. And then, <laughs> and then the, the actual uh, job description people have are henchmen and under those are minions. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> uh. That's, that sounds like fun to work for, uh, be, a, be the practical outlet for for a rich person's uh, strange uh, ideas. Yeah, because that's the boring thing. If you have a startup company, and then people very easily default to CEO and CFO and whatever, like the boring stuff. So, I mean, you have total freedom of what you call yourself. Yeah. Would you be okay with being a henchman? <laughs> you who are looking for a billionaire. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean... Uh... If it pays well, I could be a henchman. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm not sure how that uh, came, out, came across. A bit incriminating, I think. Yeah. I would want to add evil to the uh, start of that title if I was a henchman. I'd definitely rather be an evil henchman. <laughs> yeah. That sort of implies that there are good henchmen as well. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's true. I think there are. I mean, I'm a neutral henchman. Well, can you say that most of them are neutral because they are probably just someone is coming and they don't care who the person is. You, you just pay me and I'll make the person disappear. So, are they evil or are they good? They just they are evil. That <laughs> okay. <laughs> I would say if you look at like a, a James Bond movie. If you're going into a factory and all of a sudden the factory workers pull out guns and shoot at you, then you're probably not a, a good <laughs> henchman. Then you're probably an evil one. Do you think you get some sort of bonus in that factory? You know, one day you're just packing up missile heads or, you know, loading bullets or something. The next <clears> minute James Bond comes in and you start shooting. Do you think you get a bonus for every shot you fire off or every kill you make? <laughs> Well, it just seems question. like a really varied uh, job title, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's it that was surreal. Uh, when I studied, um, a friend of mine, he actually he went to trade school before he started uh, at the university, and he actually graduated trade school while working at the company who was called Kongsberg Defense System which is a Norwegian company which basically are selling missiles and everything that goes boom um, to countries uh, within the United Nations and so on. So we don't like to talk about it, but Norway is a huge exporter of uh, military weapons. And uh, since he worked there, uh, we were doing 
Um, I think it was in uh, one of the studies we were doing something with relation to health and safety and the calculations within that. And he said, I can get us into Kongsberg defense system and get a tour if we could just somehow relate this project to that. And of course, we worked really hard over the weekend to try to make our project fit in so that we could go there. And we actually got a tour and it was a vetting process before they had to do background checks on us before we could get in. And then, of course, we got a tour by the head of safety uh, measures there. And it was so surreal. It was like going into a shop and it's like you're in a warehouse where you have shelves with parts, but it's it, it looks like shelves of auto parts. But when you saw the tags on the shelves, it says like Penguin, Hellfire and the various names that you have just seen in movies. And then you had people <laughs> just casually working around in like uh, lab coats and this anti-static slippers with shopping trolleys just picking parts and you're knowing that they're just casually going to mount that together to missiles and then it's going to be shipped out in the world and used for really bad purposes. But, but uh, were they carrying machine guns just in case somebody bad popped in or somebody well, goes... That's the thing. It was very... <laughs> Not James Bonish, uh, <laughs> to say it like that. It could have been any factory, basically, if they just stripped the names off it. It was. Um, yeah. But what was really interesting, of course, they have their own factory for uh, gunpowder and rocket fuel and so on. And all the layout of the buildings are calculated on the blast radius if something <laughs> should go wrong in one building. And. Yeah, that is probably the extent of what I can say here. <laughs> <laughs> I think we signed some papers. Uh, but what's the yeah. time limit on those? Oh, I don't care. Um so they had the uh, Yeah. And they had they showed us the mixing room for uh, the the rocket fuel and of course the safety measures that would be put into place if something went wrong there because of course the factory is very close to the city center um and every new i think they've stopped now but for many years every new year's eve they would make their own fireworks display oh. but i think one year it was so powerful that they broke a lot of glasses in the house in the city center because the <laughs> bang was so big <laughs> so they just realized all right we have to stop this <laughs> Yeah. I know a chap and um, his partner got the sack from the fireworks factory for smoking behind the sheds there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the that's a good reason, reason, I would say. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> because that's... Literally... I feel so bad because the last couple of years, there, there have been some incidents uh, probably in China where some uh, <laughs> firework factory has gone up in flames and of course, it is a tragedy. But when you're looking at the pictures, it looks so beautiful. <laughs> it's like <laughs> it's purple and blue, and it's roses, and there's figurines, and there are probably two hundred millions worth of fireworks going up in that fire. Somebody might have lost their lives, but it's oh so pretty. <laughs> silver, silver and lining. that being said, if I were to lose my life in an explosion, a fireworks factory would be high up on the list of ways to go. <laughs> 